we begin with a word of prayer. All right. <laughs> Once I get up here. <clears throat> Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this class. Again, I thank you for these students. Just ask you to bless our work today. Help us to glorify you what we do and just to learn a little bit more about exponential functions and how to think about them, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So today, introducing a new, a new concept. So, definition, f of x equals to a to the x is an exponential function with base a. Now we're going to assume a is greater than zero. All right, <clears throat> so we'll assume that the base is greater than zero. <clears throat> so let me kind of proceed by um, example here to start with at least. Let's just um, try to understand how this works. So example one, we're going to look at f of x equals 2 to the x, all right? And I'm just going to make a table of values and let us think about some things. All right, so... Here's my x, here's my 2 to the x, all right? So if I put in, for example, um, minus 3, what would I have? I'd have 2, Give yeah, 2 to the minus 3, which would be 1 over 2 to the 3, oh. which would be 1 eighth, 1 eighth. Now, if I plug in minus, minus 2, I get 2 to the minus 2, which is 1 over 2 to the 2, which is 1 quarter. All right? If I plug in minus 1, I get 2 to the minus 1, which is 1 half. All right? If I plug in 0, what do I get? I get, one. yeah, 2 to the 0, which we define to be 1. If I plug in 1, what do I get? 2 to the, two to the 1, also known as two. 2. If I plug in 2, what do I get? <laughs> two. 2 to the 2, also known as 4. If I plug in 3, I get 2 to the 3, also known as 8. All right, so let's graph this thing. So here's 8, 4, 2, 1. All right, so it goes through. The y-intercept is 1. Then, let's see here. When it gets to 1, it's at 2. When it gets to 2, it's at 4. When it gets to 3, it's up here at 8. Oh. Then it's at a half, a quarter, an eighth. So, to the limits of my artistry, it looks something kind of, sort of, like that. There you go, that's what y equals 2 to the x looks like. Now, let me, let me try something a little bit weirder because maybe we haven't thought about this. What if we were, so like, what if we're somewhere between, let's say, 1 and 2, right? What would, how could we understand 2 to the 1.5 power? How could you think about that? What would that mean? Could we understand that in terms of other things we know? I think we could. Well, 1.5 is 3 halves, right? <laughs> this is 2 to the 3 halves. So we could think of that as like 2 to the 3rd to the 1 half power using our laws of exponents, two. right? So that, that's 
we could also write that as what? The square root of the square root of 8, right? Or if you prefer, you could write it as 2 root 2. I happen to know that the root square root of 2 is about 1.4. So to a good approximation, this is what? Approximately 2.8-ish, all right? And so I think if you look at the graph, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You see this point right in between 1 and 2? About here, somewhere in there. That would be 1.5 comma, you know, the square root of 8. Other question? No? No? Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, oh. Listen, the thing I'm trying to get you guys to think about is that... Let me the graph. <laughs> okay, Michael. The thing I'm getting you guys to think about is that we can take, of course, like 2 to any um, integer power. That makes sense, right? And if you could also think about 2 to any fractional power, that also kind of makes sense, right? If we have 2, if we have 2 to the m over n power, right, you can think about that as the, you know, the 1 over nth root of 2 to the m. So we, we've talked about root functions before, we've talked about power functions before, and so if I have 2 to any rational power, we have a way of understanding that in terms of elementary algebra. But this exponential function is more than just this, right? Um, we can also do things like, say, take 2 to the pi power. What is 2 to the pi power? What's pi? 3.14? Yeah, it's, it's 2 to the 3.14159701377726. You know, we go on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, but this is complicated. Mm. Uh, but. I have a confession though, Michael. I, I just made those numbers up. They're not really real. They're not real. <laughs> Should I write them down? Not if you don't want to. They're, they're, they're a lie. I'll write them down anyway. It's, it's a lie. So pa past here, past this point right here, guys, I just made these up. See, you can make up numbers past a certain point in pi because people only have memorized like the first five digits. So if you want to make them up past the first five digits, there's only about like 0.2% of the population that has pi memorized past those first, f what's that? 141519, yeah, see, so, so I, I put the nine there, it still was plausible. Anyway, every once in a while I run into somebody who has some kind of like high school teacher that made them memorize the first hundred digits in pi. Oh, you got one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it became a contest who can memorize the most? Oh, that's messed up. I like that. All right, so. No, 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 no. All wrong, all wrong. So. I want to write them down. I want to. All right, so. My point to you is that, I'm not going to erase it, it's fine. My point is that 2 to the pi, we can't really calculate with rational expressions. Like I can't take, it's, it's not like the square root of 8 or something, right? It's, what, what's meant by that is beyond this course, really. But the good news is, or the bad news, is that you need a calculator for this part of the course, for sure, because I will ask you to do things like calculate 2 to the pi, and you can't do that with school arithmetic. There's no amount of it. Won't, won't do it. But if I take my calculator, my handy dandy calculator, and I find my my button like 2, and for me there's an x to the caret, x to the box button, and I just put pi in there. There's a second function pi function, pi button. It tells me, and I can trust my calculator, right? The, uh, the no robot, there's no robot holocaust so far. The calculator's not evil. It's all good. Even if there was a ho robot holocaust, even if the uh, machines had gained consciousness and were working to destroy humanity as, as is often portrayed in fictional work, it wouldn't matter because 
this calculator is off the grid. <laughs> That's what you want me to think. Well, I will. In the robot, in the robot Holocaust, I will take this calculator. I will wrap it in aluminum foil or lead foil if I can find it, and that'll fix it. You know, if need be, we can do that. Anyway, my point to you is like, you need a calculator to calculate two to weird powers. Okay. But anyway, that, that's what, this is what the 2 to the whatever function, the exponential base 2 looks like. Let us stop and smell the roses, so to speak, here. What's the domain of the exponential function? What's the domain of 2 to the x? What's the range um, of 2 to the x? Um, yeah. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. Negative infinity to infinity. We, we have a winner. Yep. How about the range? Oh, um, and the range is zero mm -hmm. infinity. Zero to infinity would be the range. That is, that is correct. Let me ask you another question. Is this function one to one? Now, my, my, graph, my graph makes you doubt, right? Yes, a little bit. My graph is kind of... Uh, Yes, but, it is, because it passes the horizontal line test. That's right. If you, if, you, if you could imagine this, if you zoomed in, if you zoomed in on this and put the scale right and blew that up, it would actually still look like this. If I was to draw a cross mark there and zoom in, it would still have that same, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you go to the right shape. <clears throat> this is the nature of the exponential function is it's always increasing at a higher and higher rate as you go across. All right? So, yes, it does pass the horizontal line test. It is a one-to-one -one function. Um, so, actually, the, it has what's called the one-to-one -one property. What's the one-to-one -one property? Let's, let's put this into practice here before I tell you more. So I teach this material different ways, different semesters. I'm experimenting at the moment, trying to uh, teach things slightly different than I have before. And eh, we'll see if it works. So what I've done before is just to talk ad nauseum about how to graph these things and understand them. But I'm mixing in a little bit of equation solving along the way this time, okay? And so, <clears throat> so this is chapter four, Michael. We're roughly speaking sections 4.1 and 4.2. Where can I find that one to one property? In section 4.1 or 4.2. But, uh, um, so two to the x has the, but also on the board. So oh, two, to, two to the, on the, on the board, Michael. Up here, buddy. I'm going to say it. So the one-to-one -one property is this. It's just the definition we wrote the other day. It's that if we have 2 to the A equals to 2 to the B, that tells me that A is equal to B. That was, the, that was our definition of one-to-one -one function, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that the exponential, the base 2 exponential does that because it passes the horizontal line test. But this means I can solve equations involving powers of 2. Like, for example, let me show you an example of this. So, like, what if I had 2 to the x squared equals to, well, equals to 9? Well, that's kind of annoying, right? Because I can't, I can't use the 1 to 1 property yet, can I? Oh, 9. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. My bad. This is from the future. Sorry, all this talk of robot holocausts and such. All right, so, all right, I did, I did see a trailer for Back to the Future 4, but I'm pretty sure it was a deep fake. Have you guys seen the, uh, the deep fake of, of Greta Thunberg uh, yes. selling the vegan grenades? Yeah. I, it had me for a minute. <laughs> up, right up until the vegan grenade, I was like, no, no one's that stupid. Mm -hmm. oh. Then again, watch news from like Washington, D.C. for a week, right? So this is 2 to the third. 
8 is 2 to the third. So the point is, if I have a number there that I can write as a power of 2, and it's equal to 2 to something, then the 1 to 1 property tells me what? What does the 1 to 1 property tell me? It tells me this. They have to be equal. So we get x squared is equal to 3. And what are the solutions to that? Well, I use. Oh, oh, we need to square both sides. Oh, no, it's already squared for us. We need to square root both sides and use the square root property. But your, your heart's in the right place. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. And there you go. That's the solution to this problem. That's not too bad, is it? That was easy. That was easy. Should we do another? Sure. Let's, let's do another. Example three, what if we have two to the three x minus 11 is equal to one quarter? Can you guys solve this problem? What would you do? How about the one fourth? Can we write that as a power of two? No. So. Uh oh, well then we're stuck. <laughs> Because we have no technology to fix that at the moment. We will learn a technology to turn everything into a power two. We're not there yet, though. Later this week, probably. Can anybody tell me what that is? What is four? Four is what? Two squared? Four. Four is two squared. So this is one over two squared, which means that is what actually two to the what? Two to the two two to the negative two. So this, this kind of problem can only be solved at the moment if we can see how to put the number on the one side equal to a power of two. It's very limited in terms of what we can do, but there's a lot of problems like this. Your book has dozens of problems like this for you to practice on. Yes, Michael? You got x equals to three? Oh, you're working ahead. That's cheating. Let's see here. I'm just kidding. Brain, brain power. Brain power. I guess I'll allow it. Let's uh, see. So if we add 11 to both sides, we get 3x is equal to? What's 11 minus? So that's 9. Oh, cool. I wasn't hoping. I didn't, I didn't make this. I, I just made this up. So that worked, the fact that it worked out to a whole number, it's pretty cool. There we go. All right. So the exponential has the one-to-one -one property. So we can solve all kinds of equations like this. But let us talk more about the graph of an exponential. What would happen if, for instance, we had a different base? Like, what would base 3 look like? What would base, uh, let's see here, example 4. Well, I guess first I'll deal with the case a equals to 1 half. That would be a little bit different, wouldn't it? So if we would have y is equal to 1 half to the x, what is that? That is the same as 2 to the minus 1 to the x, right? which is the same as 2 to the minus x. So what would that tell you about the graph of y equals 1 half to the x as it relates to the graph of, let me, let me draw both here again. So the, the 2 to the x graph and the 1 half to the x graph, they're naturally linked because one is the reflection of the other over the y equals, the y axis. See, um, if this is my, there's my y equals 2 to the x graph that we just picked up a second ago here. What is the, you remember transformations of graphs? What happens if we take the argument and replace x with minus x? What's that do to the graph? It, it, remember, it, fli it flips it over the y axis. So if we reflect, we've got, the same shape, but the other way. So there's your y equals 1 half to the x. OK? What's the range in the domain of 1 half to the x? It's the same as what Michael already told us, right? The range is still 0 to infinity. The domain is still minus infinity to infinity. So that, that stayed the same. Um, does it make sense? So, I mean, the of y half x is the same as 2 negative 1 
right? Hey, let's let's look at another one. What happens if what happens, for example, if we were to look at say y is equal to two? Um, well, not two. That's a bad number. Three plus two to the uh, x minus one. How could we graph that? How would we graph that? Now, of course, you could. You can make a table of values like my example one, right? But we can be lazier than that. We can use transformations of graphs. What is this? You start with, you start with y equals 2 to the x, right? And if we shift that to y equals 2 to the x minus 1, and then we can shift that to y is equal to 3 plus 2 to the x minus 1. You guys tell me what... I should put under, what kind of, what's the geometry of those arrows? What is that? That's a shift what? This is a horizontal shift, right? Let me not say horizontally. It's a shift right, right? It's a shift right by one. And what's this one here? Shift or translate up three, right? So what we do is we just take the uh, 2 to the x, we take the 2 to the x graph, all right, and um, well, what I think about is the horizontal asymptote. There's a horizontal asymptote to these graphs. What is it? The ones we've drawn so far? Zero, right? Y equal to zero was the horizontal asymptote. And just in one direction, right? I'm sorry, I try not to bring one direction into my lectures, but sometimes it happens. They're all but forgotten. It's okay. So here's y equals to 3, whereas like in this one, y equals to 0 was the horizontal asymptote, but kind of only in one direction, right? Like for x going to infinity, 1 half to the x goes to 0, whereas for x going to minus infinity, the 2 to the x goes to 0, right? It's, it's just one-sided. Anyway, so my graph, it's like this point right here was what, 0, 1? So that 0, 1 shifts to the point um, 1, 4, I believe. And um, then you're at like a half over here. So there you go, it's something like that. So it's the same shape we had before, just shifted over one and, 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 and brought up three units. Okay? So if you can graph two to the x, you can graph something that's related but you know moved up a little bit and shifted over you can you can do these kinds of things right what's the domain if i call this thing f of x what's the domain for this one what's the range Very good. What's the range? 3 to infinity. 3, yep, 3 to infinity. Is 3 included? No. No. It is not. It never quite gets there, but it, it, it gets close. But uh, yeah. All right. So enough about base 2. Let's talk about other bases. All right. So if I was to draw... Um, so like here's one. Let's see here. So I, I will I will draw the. Uh, I will attempt to draw the. Okay. So there is your y equals two to the x graph. Okay. What does y equals 3 to the x look like? Two. 
think about it, it goes through, so this point here, right, is what? That point is 1, 2. This one goes through the point 1, 3, right? It's up here. It's bigger, right? On the other hand, over here, this guy would be like the point minus 1, 1 half, right? And the green graph, it's going to go through minus one, not one half, but one third. So it's down a little bit. So what's happening is that to the right of the y, the right of the y-axis, the green graph is above the red one, but to the left, it's below. So in other words, the three to the x goes to zero faster than 2 to the x to the, for x negative, but it also grows faster for x positive like that. All right? So that's 3 to the x. And I think if you understand this, what's, what's 10 to the x going to do? Increase. It would even be steeper, right? 10 to the x would be all the way up at 10 when it gets to 1, right? And it would be down here at a 10th over here. So the bigger the number to the x power, the bigger, the steeper the slope. Ah, slope. That's a, that, I, I'm glad you mentioned slope, Michael. Can you guys figure out for me, what is the slope? What would you even mean by slope of these lines? Uh, they're not lines, are they? What are they? Well, they're curves, aren't they? Right? But could we, could we kind of like approximate... We, we could kind of approximate the, uh, maybe approximate is the wrong word, but we could, we could look at the well, so-called secant line. What's a secant line? We could do something like look at this right here, right? We go one over, we go one up. See that? Um, Oh, that's still not what I want to do. Sorry, guys. I want to look at... I'll get it eventually here. Give me a second. Um, oh, no, no, I do want that. I do want that. Well, just a second. Let me think about my life. I guess I'll do like this. Go from here. See, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy, guys. I, I've forgotten how I try to sell this. I may be selling it wrong today. Okay, so if we look at that, that the, the, the triangle superimposed on the red one, um, we're going what? We're going two over. We're going up how much? Two. Oh, one. Going from one half up to two. One one so half. one and a half, yeah. Right. So three one halves, point. right? So what's the slope of this line? Three over two. Slope of the uh, two to the x is what? Three, yeah, the rise over the run, right? Three over two over what? Two? So that's like three fourths. So 0 0.75. Man, that's still not what I want to say. I'm sorry, guys. Could you also use the points uh, negative 1, 1 half, and 1, 2, and subtract 1, 2 minus y1, and x2 minus x1? Well, yeah, that, that's what I'm doing. Huh. Well, let me just try this. What, what if we do the same thing for the 3 to the x graph? What do we get there? Write this down again. So, so, so the 3 to the x we get, I'll do your idea, 3 minus 1 third, right? Divided by 2. So I'm, I'm doing from here all the, I mean from, from here, right? All the way up to there. And so that's what? 9 minus 1, 8 thirds over 2, also known as 
8 over 6, which is what? 4 thirds, which is what? 1.33? Okay, this is good, right. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Is that still two units over the y divided by 2? Yeah, it's still, I'm still compa yeah, I'm still comparing what happened at minus 1 to what happened at 1, okay. all right? Let me not spend too much time on this. This is just as motivational. I'm trying to convince you that if you look at the secant lines, so the, the, the secant lines here, what is a secant line? The secant, the, the secant line just connects these two points. Like this is the secant line, that one. That black line is a secant line. So the secant line for 2 to the x has slope 3 quarters if I connect minus 1 and 1. The secant line for 3 to the x, if I connect minus 1 to 1, the secant line has slope 4 thirds. So what does this all mean? This means that there ought to be some base, some exponential base between these two, right? That would give you like a slope of one, if you can imagine that. If we could zoom in somehow, like here. So to, to do this properly, I need to talk about limits and such, but right in between these two guys, right in between two and three, there's some other curve, right? where if I was to like zoom in there, if I was to zoom in here, all right, if I was to zoom in there and just make like a little triangle, like right here, all right, then the, um, the slope would be equal to one. Right, if you, if you shrink these triangles, you can see that the slope of the three to the x at, as it crosses the y-axis y is bigger than 1, whereas the slope of the 2 to the x, if you cross the y-axis, is smaller than 1. Now you should say, what are you talking about? We didn't only define slope for a line, right? So that's true. To, we, to really define slope properly, we have to do calculus. I'm just telling you that there is, in fact, a base between 2 and 3, which makes that curve have slope 1, whatever that means as it crosses the y-axis. And that particular choice of base is a special one. This, yes, Michael? I don't get the slope. Can you explain it? Yeah, I'm just calculating the slope of the line that connects these two points. So, so connecting two points? Connecting minus oh, one. Same line. Uh, but they're both comparing from minus one to one. So from minus one to one for two to the x, I go over two but I go up three halves, so I got a slope of three quarters. On the other hand, for the, th for the three to the x, I go over two, but I go up not three quarters, but in fact, three minus one third, which is eight thirds. So I get a slope that's, that's bigger than one. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So there is something called E, Euler's number. Euler's number. And this is a base which is between 2 and 3, such that, again, if you were to look at the graph of E to the x, it has a slope of 1 as it crosses the, uh, the y-axis. And this particular number, it's a transcendental number. It's like pi. It has, no, it has a non-repeating decimal. It goes on and on forever. You could, you could make your students memorize it and give them bonus points if you wanted to. Although, unless you're a math, pe math teacher, that'd be really weird. Right? <laughs> like, what if you're a gym teacher and you make them memorize digits to, like, exponential? That would be, that'd be weird. <laughs> What's that? Second graders do it. <laughs> I guess you're, you gotta worry about the, at some point the parents will intervene. But, um, <laughs> you know. So this is of course not a proper definition. The proper definition for the number E is given in calculus, all right? It is an intrinsically calculus based idea, actually. It's because it involves that limiting process I'm alluding to, but not really doing justice. The good news is, it's in your calculator, all right? So, and once you know about the exponential, here's example six, you can do stuff like this. Like, what if we have e to the 7x is equal to e to the x squared? How would we solve that? Guess what? The exponential, 
By the way, um, f of x equals to e to the x is the exponential, <laughs> all right? As in, it's the most important one. Um, so if I, don't, if I don't specify a base, if I don't specify a base for the exponential, I do mean base e. That's just the custom in mathematics. An exponential function means base e. All right. If I want a base 2 exponential function, I've got to say an exponential base 2 or an exponential base 3, right? But if I want the exponential function, I just say that. The exponential function is a one-to-one -one function, which means we can do the stuff we did back in example 2 and 3. We can play this game again. It's got the one-to-one -one property, so what does this give us? 7x equals x squared, right? And then we can solve that, right? Because that tells us that x squared minus 7x is equal to 0, which tells us that x times x minus 7 is equal to 0, which tells us that we either have x equals to 0 or x equals to 7 by factoring. So that's one of the nice things about this course is if you miss, if you miss quadratics the first time, They'll just keep coming back until you learn them, right? Or, or you leave, I guess, but don't leave. The time for leaving was months ago. You might as well stick with it at this point. <laughs> Besides, I will you know, replace your earlier horrible test grades if you have those with a better final exam grade if you make one. Do, the, do make a better final exam grade, though. How to get better at the material? Practice. Practice, right. It's a lot like playing the piano or something, right? You don't just go listen to concertos to like improve your skill, right? You actually have to like do it yourself, right? I guess you might ask why we have class. I think it helps to see somebody do it first, you know, but. Any questions? Yeah? I still don't get what the slopes are. Oh, it's okay. We're, I'm just motivating that there is a slope between two and three that has this special property that if you look at, if you look at the line, so like there's, there's, some, there's some graph, right? Y equals e to the x. So if I try to put a line, like a best fit line close to this point, if I try to make it match that line as best as I can, okay? Oh. Like that. That line will have slope one. That essentially defines, that so defines the exponential the function. Rise right. My point is, with my, my, what I was trying to say here, Michael, is that if you study 2 to the x and 3 to the x, you can see that the slope of the line which fits them close to 0, it doesn't have slope 1. It has slope either less than 1 or greater than 1, all right? Let me write it down again. Which means that there is some base between 2 and 3 which has slope 1. Because you can see that by continuously adjusting the base, you get different slopes at the, or, at the, at the y-intercept. Let but anyway, okay, so <clears throat> if the exponential is a one-to-one -one function, what does that mean? What can we do with one-to-one -one functions? Inverse, there has to be a what? There has to be, there's an inverse function, that's right. And in fact, the inverse function for the exponential has a name. It is the logarithm. So, we have finally reached the point of talking about what is a logarithm. So, let me put it up here for you. give you the definition of a logarithm here. So the logarithm is simply the inverse of the exponential function. All right. Um, in particular, definition. If um, 
a is greater than 1, then f of x equals log base a of x defines the inverse function of, let me put an f inverse here, inverse function of f of x equals a to the x. So what does that mean? That means that um, f inverse of x, which is log base a of x, is equal to y. Oh, maybe, maybe I should, ah, rats. Uh, let, me, let me play a game here. Just a second, guys. Let me make, any, let me make things match up with our lingo last time better. I'm going to put a y here. 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 And I'm going to put an x here. Didn't see that coming, did you? So th this is equal to x only if what? Um, a to the x is equal to y. So if a to the x is equal to y, then log base a of y is equal to x. This defines the, the logarithm. And I can give you a couple other formulas for it that are helpful. Namely that log base a of a to the power x is equal to x. Whereas a to the log base a of y is equal to y. This is for any x, for x in the reals, and this is for y greater than zero. Why is that? Remember that the domain of the inverse function is the range of the function. So if the range of the exponential is zero to infinity, that means that the domain of the logarithm is zero to infinity. See this? The domain of log base a um, is, is equal to zero to infinity. We cannot take the logarithm of like a negative number. So let me just, I know these are, you know, a little bit to digest here. And we'll be working on this for like a couple weeks, all right? I just want to make sure there's like a lot of daylight between when I introduce this topic and the final. I want to make sure you guys have had lots of time to assimilate the material and like do well on it, all right? So that's why we're getting to it today. I could have put it off to Wednesday and made today like a less stressful experience, right? But more stress now for less stress later, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eh. Yep. Eh. you like, I've got a paper due today or something? I don't know. Hey, did you ever think about this? You have no essay in this class. That's a good point. Yeah, You're welcome. Right? You're welcome. What, do we use APA or do we use, uh, what's the other one? The ML whatever? MLA. MLA. The answer is, we don't care. <laughs> Let me show you an example here. Every digit of pi is equal. So guys, how about this? What would log base 2 of 16 be equal to? So, Here's how to think about it. If you can make 16 into a power of 2, we can, right? 16 is 2 to the power 4, right? So, what's it equal to? Like, it's, see, part of the, right, like right here, see that? Just use this rule right here. So if you have log base 2 of 2 to the thing, it's just the thing. So this is equal to 4. 
If you want to look at it in terms of the if and only if, the double arrow up here. Why is it equal to 4? Very good, Michael. It's because this is true if and only if 2 to the 4 is equal to 16, which it is. So the answer to the x, so find the exponent. Yeah. Here's another one. Uh, I'm stressed. You're stressed? Uh, Log base 3 of uh, 1 over 81. What's that? So what I do for these is I convert the input into a power of 3 if I can. Power of 3 to negative. That's log base 3 of 1 over 3 to the power of 4, right? Now, is the log base 3 and 1 over 3 to the something natural enemies? No. What are natural, I mean, so like the natural enemy of a to the power is log base a. But I have to have 3 to a power, not 1 over 3 to a power, I have to have 3 to a power. So this is log base 3 of 3 to the minus 4. Aha! Now we have the requisite pattern that we need. We need log base a of a to the something. And that is minus 4. So there you go. That's how we can calculate these. Now, another way you can calculate these is with a calculator. I can get my calculator out and we can figure out how to calculate log base 3. Now, that might be tricky on your calculator to figure out how to calculate log base 3, but we'll talk about that like next class, probably. Or soon. Thanks, guys.